in our ongoing series on spiritual warfare. Uh, today's lesson is put on the full armor of God. Last week we talked about Ephesians 6.10, which talked about the power and the immensity of that power uh, that God has given to us as believers to help us in uh, fighting the spiritual warfare. And today we go to the next verse and on to find out what God has to say now that we have that power to put on the full armor of God. So we find it mentioned uh, in, well, let's read this entire passage first. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Paul, Paul turns from what I called the battle cry last week to the battle plan in this passage. And if you're going to go into battle, you, you want to have more than just the strength. You want to have the plan to go in that battle and, and, and defeat the enemy. So there are three things that are mentioned here in this particular passage that are the three parts of, of what I would call the battle plan. So the battle plan is... One, you must put on the whole armor of God. You must put it on. I will get into each of these three in just a moment. The second one is, you must take a stand. You must stand your ground or stand firm. And the third one is, we must watch out for the traps of the devils. In this particular passage called the wiles of the devil. So those three things we're going to talk about this morning. The first one. We must put on the armor of God. And Paul states this twice in that passage we just looked at. Once in verse 11, where it says, put on the whole armor of God. And then, then again in verse 13, where it says, take up the whole armor of God. Now, some, some passage, or some Bible translations have the same words in both cases, put on the whole armor of God. But there is actually a different word at the beginning of chapter, uh, verse 13 than at the beginning of chapter 11. One is truly to put on, the other one is to take up. So we'll talk about, the, we'll talk about those in a minute. When Paul was uh, writing these words, he was in prison in Rome. And uh, when I was in Rome, a couple of us looked up, looked for the prison that, that Paul was in. Now, they only had one prison during the first century in Rome. And so it, it, if we could find it, we'd know that it was the one. And we, we do know from historical records the name of it. It's called, a, it's called a Mamertine Prison in Rome. So we looked and we found it at the top of, uh, uh, what is the name of that hill? Capitoline Hill, overlooking the Ro Roman Forum. And here's one, one view of inside that prison. And the next uh, view I'm going to show you is taken from, I'm going to back up over here and take it back the other direction. There. And it, the prison actually had several layers, depending on the offense. Uh, you, could be, you could be actually in a dungeon below, and you can see that where there might have been a dungeon below right there. Uh, and this was another view on a different level. And uh, I have the curiosity, I have not really researched it. We do know that probably Peter was in prison in Rome as well. My, my question is, was he in there at the same time Paul was in there? I, I, don't, I haven't researched it, so I don't know. But it's just curiosity that came to my mind this week. All right, having seen the prison where he was writing to the Ephesians, he, he was probably chained to a guard 24 hours a day. And uh, he had a chance probably to talk with that guard 
ask him about the armor. Find out what it uses and how you put them on and things like that. And Paul uses word pictures taken from that armor uh, in this passage that we're going to be looking at in future weeks when we get into each of the pieces of the armor. Uh, probably taken from his observation or discussion with the, the Roman guard that was guarding him, or several guards guard, guarding him day and night, chained uh, to, to him, or he chained them. And uh, I think that'll be important for us to re remember when we get into looking at each of the pieces of uh, armor. We'll do that, we'll start that in probably about three weeks. Uh, now, now that Paul, now what Paul doesn't tell us right now is about those pieces. All he tells us right now is to put it on. Take it up, put it on. And uh, though God has given his armor to us, we need to be reminded it does no good to be sitting on the floor or in a closet. You need to put it on. God's given it to you. You need to put each piece of the armor, uh, armor on, and uh, we'll discuss those in future lessons. God has given us the strength for the battle. That's what we talked about last week. And now he says, put on the full armor of God. And it's important to notice he twice says the full armor of God. It does no good if you put on part of the armor of God. That's because Satan will find your weak spot. If you don't put on the full armor of God, Satan and his demons will find that part that's not protected, and he'll get you in the eye, get you and I in that spot, whatever that weak spot is for each of us. And we all have a weak spot. And we just need to be careful to put on the whole armor of God. One of my, one of Paula's uh, likes, if I put it that way, she likes, uh, she's done quite a study on the Civil War, uh, American Civil War. And we've made a, a number of trips for the purpose of visiting the uh, battle sites primarily in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, that area, uh, that we've gone back and visited uh, a number of the sites. We've also been a, at a place where they reenact uh, battles, and uh, we watch as they reenact the actual battle as it would have taken place uh, 150 years ago. And uh, what we find, and it's true of any battle, those that are standing at the end are the victors. If you're still standing at the end, you've won. And that's the next point in the battle plan, is that we are to stand our ground. He mentions it, he, he makes it a point of mentioning it four times, and it's so important that he does that. And so these are the four places where you find it. In verse 11, you find it, Take uh, uh, that you must be able to stand. That's why you take up the armor, that you might be able to stand. The next uh, verse 13 has it in there twice, that you may be able to withstand, and the last part of that verse, and having done all, to stand. And then the next verse, verse 14, it says, stand therefore. So he mentions four times here that the battle plan, or at least this part of the battle plan, after you put on the garmer, uh, arm, garmer, Garment or armor, just like uh, putting two words together, you do just t tremendously. Yeah, you do. Uh, put on the armor, now he wants you to stand. Now that's a little different than we would maybe think that God would want us to do. Put on the armor, then rush into battle. But that's not what he's saying here. He wants us to stand, and there's, I believe there's a, a reason for that. But I want to I look at this idea of standing. I, I remember 
talking to somebody and saying a good morning or something like that how you how you feeling and I don't remember who this was that responded it could have been somebody in this class the response was I, I'm still vertical <laughs> and I think that's that's the victory sign you're 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 still vertical and that's the way it is with a Christian life you're still standing and that I, I we, that's the point that he's making here we must stand we must stand firm we must withstand the enemy and he goes on and does that now that might go against uh, some of the songs we sing like onward Christian soldiers but it might go along it may go along with something like stand up stand up for Jesus and so there may be times when you God wants you to move forward but there are also are times when he wants you to stand still was it when the Old Testament passages stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and there's a, a number of verses uh, in the Bible that tells us to stand and stand firm for the gospel so uh, it may, Christian activity may be necessary in some cases but in spiritual warfare he is telling us we are to stand and I, I think we'll get into that and understand why uh, either later in this lesson or in the future lessons that we will have because we're going to be talking about the wiles of the devil that, uh, and uh, a few of those before we get into the actual uh, armor. Most of us, I shouldn't say most of us, some of us measure a person, somebody else's spiritual maturity by the number of things they do how active are they in the church and that's not what God is telling us in this particular passage he's telling us stand don't go forward stand so why does Paul do that one of the main reasons and we've already studied this in previous lessons is that Christ has already won the battle and he wants us to stand in that victory we can walk or march in other areas of our Christian life but only stand in spiritual warfare the main excuse me uh, a couple of particular scriptures that come to mind uh, as I was thinking about the victory that Christ is one for us one is in first first Corinthians 15 57 it says thanks be unto God that giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our through Jesus Christ our Lord or in the New King James the Lord Jesus Christ also in 2nd Corinthians 2 14 it says and now thanks the King I'll say it in the King James you can see it there but thanks be unto God that always causes us to triumph we are triumphant and that particular passage is talking about it's not it it is a triumphal uh, procession because you have been the victor now you're displaying that victor by marching through the streets or something like that. that's what that particular verse means when it's triumphing in Christ uh, thankfully God has called us in this particular case to stand other cases maybe to march out uh, Christ has defeated Satan we need to stand in that position that Christ has given us a couple of scriptures are going through my mind just now and uh, uh, one of them is I think Galatians the fifth chapter verse 1 stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and I think there's another one in Philippians 4 verse 1 that said stand firm stand firm and uh, depending on your translation something like that stand firm at, in the New King James I believe it is uh, I told you last week that I would probably tell, talk to you about the Roman army today and I want to do that now and I'm taking my notes from 
a fourth century writer who, who was a historian of the Roman army. And he wrote about how they ordered themselves, how they, their form, formations were, uh, the, the armor that they carried with them. And uh, so I'm, what I'm going to give you is from his uh, perspective and knowledge. His name was Vegetius, living in the fourth century. And uh, he tells us that, <clears throat> this is just kind of a, he tells us that the, the least, the, low, uh, the smallest group of uh, soldiers would be 16 of them. And that's what's represented by those dots on the screen. There are 16 of them, and they take up a space of 36 square feet, six feet by six feet in total around this. And when I say six feet and six feet, I don't know if they used feet or meters or cubits uh, in the Roman army. I, that of it was feet. Uh, whether it would be meters, I don't know if they st started using meters back, uh, uh, back at that time. So uh, I'm just using this two meters, two, two yards between each of these people. And each person is being told, all you have to guard is the squ six square feet, not squ this six feet by six feet around you. Let me show you there. That's... You don't have to worry about anybody way down the line. That's your area. They said, stand and make sure nobody of the enemy ever comes into that square. And that's, what, that's how the Roman, yes, the Roman army would be dispatched to some country and go out on the field of battle. But when they started the battle, they would stand still. In this kind of a formation, and I'll put it on there a little further, uh, the guy, first and way out over here, you don't need to know what that guy's doing out there. You need to know that you protect that six feet by six feet. Just never let the enemy come into that, that space, that square. And if each person in the army did that, they became victorious because all you, the, you don't have to do the whole thing. All you have to do is just that six feet by six feet. Protect it. Make sure the enemy never comes in there. And uh, they stood. It's an example of us. We need to stand. Stand firm. Never let the enemy come into your sphere. Your sphere might be your family. Your sphere might be your ministry. Never let the enemy make inroads into that place that God has put you and God has given you to guard. Stand firm against the enemy. <clears throat> you don't have to solve the problems of this country. You don't have to, nobody can. <laughs> except, except Christ. You don't have to solve the problems of society. You solve the problems in your own sphere. And make sure that if the enemy's already there, to kick him out. Resist him. Get rid of him in your sphere of evidence, uh, sphere of influence. We don't have the whole world. We have that sp spot. Now, as I was thinking about that uh, yesterday at Starbucks, <laughs> I, uh, God has gifted each of you with a gift of the Spirit. And that gift of the Spirit may broaden the area of what is your sphere of influence. And God still wants you to use it for his glory, but also that that also defeats the enemy when you use the gift that God has given you. So uh, keep that in mind. Each of us have a sphere that we are to guard and stand in and to kick the devil out if he ever tries to get in there or is already in there. Uh, get rid of him by the power that God has given us and the armor that God has 
wants us to put on. Now, the last part of the plan is watch out for the traps of the enemy. And in the, in the scripture, it's called the wiles of the devil. Now, I didn't plan to say much more than this, because that's going to be all next week's lesson is going to be on the wiles of the devil, because that's a huge, huge topic. But uh, I'll just give you a sort of a clue. We'll go over it again, this part of it, next week. In Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles in the Greek, Greek language is methodea, uh, from which we get our English word methods. So the wiles or the schemes or the plans, the step-by-step, -step, he has a step-by-step -step, uh, program to defeat you. And uh, it may be different for you than it is for me, but he's already found what's weak in me and in you. And he'll use that on a step-by-step -step approach to get you to fall in that area. So next week we'll talk about, was there a hand? No. Uh, the methods, the plan, uh, the devices, the schemes of uh, uh, the wiles of, of the enemy. Uh, let me, in closing, let me just say, our struggle in this life, they are real. There's no denying that. You can't spiritualize that. They're real. They may be spiritual in nature, but they are real. And they're inevitable. We're all going to have this. The Lord says, think not strange when you fall into diverse, different temptations and things like that. Uh, whether your battle is internal or external, whether it's temporary or permanent, whether it's life-altering or just somewhat annoying, or in any case, God is giving us the, the command to stand firm with his strength and his armor. It's not our armor, it's his armor, the armor of the Lord. And God's word tells us that we cannot be passive in this. We are a participant in his army, and, and even while we're standing still, we're still active while we're standing. We're not, not, not doing anything, uh, if I can put it that way. The hard days are sure to come. There will be battles, and when they do, do we have, we, all of us can choose either fight or flight. And God has said, I'll give you the weapons that you need to fight and the strength you need to keep fighting. And that's what we're going to talk about in the, in the several weeks to come.